Hi everyone, let's talk about Santa Maria. And this is gonna be, I know they're all called first impressions, but this is gonna be a bit more first impressions than the rest because it's only recently come and it would be best if the video could be ready before Essen really, so you can decide for yourselves whether you'd like to pick it up because that's where it's coming out. Essen 2017, a Porter Games, Santa Maria. Now this was on my radar already, it was on my uh, list because you know, last year, Avenue came from a Porter Games Automania. I don't know why I said it like that. I was trying to remember where it was to point at it. But yeah, that came from them as well. I really enjoy that. And more besides. Uh, but Santa Maria, I really like... Well, it's, it's another bigger game. Avenue was fantastic, but it's you know a very light, quick game. This is a bigger game, definitely. And I, yeah, so it was on my radar already, but I absolutely love it. I really like the look of it. The art is really nice. The way it all looks as you're building your thing, you can say that about any tile laying game, that as you are you know, forming your thing, that I can't really pick up and show you because it's just gonna all fall apart, isn't it? As you are building your city, it really does come together nicely, you know, how you've got all these colonists coming together on these roads and things, and you are, sometimes you're trying to build specific things. That's a nice, uh, a nice touch to the variability of it because there are, end game scoring things that change game by game but also you have to buy into them so you're not necessarily going to go for all of them but uh, when we uh, when we first played we had one that wanted you to get you know like a, a 4x4 or a 5x5 grid solid of completed things so we were very much trying to get that done and then in uh, in the playthrough one that just happened we were trying to get things connected to the town uh, the town hall rather than anything else rather than trying to fill up the whole thing but yeah I really like how it comes together as you're building uh, as you're building up the map and there are so many, there are so many nice little things pulling at your decisions. So the the main crux of the game is, you know, when when do you uh, when do you take the dice? You, you're trying to draft these dice, and you're each only going to get three. But you know, you want the numbers that will help you the most without having to spend as much money to adjust them. Because that that's a good thing. You can always spend money to get what you really need if you have got the money you can sell goods at any time to do that you can buy goods at any time well the the simple goods you can buy them if you desperately need them but there's you know there's always a balance between i want to build up this board as much as possible I, i'm going to activate the two columns so i want to put as much stuff in that two column as possible so that when i do activate it i'm going to get a, a million actions when when it finally all you know kicks off but is that two gonna be there by the time, if, if I wait a turn or two turns to grab a couple of tiles and place them in there, is that two gonna be there? Is all that's gonna be left is, you know, fives and sixes and I'm gonna to have to pay a fortune to activate the fantastic thing that I've been building up for ages. So there's a great push and pull with that, but then, you know, the decisions of what you get in the tiles is, you know, driven by the actions you wanna take, you know, do you get to, you've, you've got these powers that are really nice that, Give you a little bit of a guide in your gameplay as well so if you can pay money to adjust where the dice end up after you've activated a royal column you want to be generating some money so you can do things with that there was one that we played with where you could adjust uh, you know how the when you when you take a shipping tile from say the money row it needs to go on the money row on your player board there's one that lets you pay some money to adjust the row that it goes on so you could just you could be fulfilling whichever contract you want and then putting it to get the bonus that you want by spending a little bit of money. In that case, you'd be really going for shipping. So that's a, that's a factor in which tiles you take, but also there's the roads. Do you need the roads to link up? Do you Have you got end game bonuses that need uninterrupted roads? Have uh, the tiles got people on? Because that's gonna be worth points at the end of the game, maybe from these tiles, but in general, if you complete a row or column, it scores the number of points as the number of people that are in that row or column. So that's another decision. You know, are you kind of building yourself into a corner as well where you're gonna need those uh, single tiles to fill up spaces because, you know, those colonists don't score in, unless the row or column is full. So you might need one of those one spaces, but to get one, not only are you gonna have to, you know, pass and maybe be first if other people are gonna be after them, but it means you are absolutely not gonna be, it doesn't mean you're gonna be last because the first player is decided by who took the top bonus and then it goes clockwise. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be in last, but it means you're absolutely not going to be in first. So whether you can actually place the tile in your colony or whether placing that is really going to restrict you in the future is another thing that's uh, playing on your mind. You know, which resources you can get based on which shipping tiles are out or which of the tiles you know that let you exchange resources for points or money or other resources. You know, all of these things are playing a part at the same time. And it's really nice that you have got that, that, that great push and pull the great everything's tugging you in a different direction and you are trying to 
you know, trying to figure out, you're trying to puzzle out which is the best route for you to take. I really, really enjoy that about it. On top of all the tile laying and everything, I really like the two tracks and the, the differences in them as well. The religion track is fantastic for how it unlocks those blue dice, which uh, which let you activate rows rather than columns. So that is surprisingly a, a different thing as well. It's uh, it's 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 a very different decision of what you're activating because you have to build towards that as well. You know, I don't want to just make a column brilliant. Maybe I want to improve the row a little bit because I've got this number. Now you do just roll these blue dice, but there is a variant in the back of the rule book that suggests that you work out how many blue dice should be available for everyone and just roll these with the white dice at the start of the round and you draft them just the same. It's just that you can only take as many blue dice as you have unlocked on this. So I think I would prefer that because that is a little... It's, it's nice that the, the criticisms that I had based on our plays were kind of already solved in the, in the rule book. So yeah, by drafting these, it does take that away because you, you just... By just rolling these, you might roll all the same number, which sounds unlikely and like I'm being silly, but it happened. You could roll all the same number that is nowhere near anything that you have got uh, a, a decent row to activate, which could be really annoying because, it, again, it's nice that you can pay to adjust those, or maybe you've got a power that'll let you adjust the dice, but being able to draft these would be really nice because then, then at least, if you manage to roll six of one number, at least both of you are in the same situation. I got so angry, I knocked the box. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a little twist that I think we will play from the future, like, not we won't play from the future, but in future, we will play with the drafting the blue dice instead. So yes, I was on about the religion track. The monks are a really nice thing as well. Uh, so you've got, at, at first I thought, you know, these, these missionary stations where you get the resources straight away, they're very, very weak, but they can lead to you unlocking, you know, the perfect shipping tile that's going to give you points at the end of the game, but also it's going to build up how how many bonuses you're going to get when you retire from the round eventually. Or they unlock those powers that, you know, they, they're going to give you really useful powers throughout the game, or maybe they're going to give you end game bonuses deciding, depending on what you want to take, and you are not locked out of them if other people take them. You're going to have to pay those people the money, which is always, you know, an off-putting thing to do. You're going to help your opponent because money can be used for a lot of things, you know, activating the buildings, adjusting the dice. And so it's very useful to have. And if a player hasn't got it, but they've got in here first, it's a, you know, it's an agonizing thing of, do I want to give them that power? Uh, and getting to the end of it is going to generate you points as well. So you could really, really, I tried to do it in the playthrough, but didn't do it very effectively, I don't think, but you could really try and race along this. Not only are you going to get to place all of your monks before anyone else, but you're going to unlock all of your blue dice before anyone else, but then you're going to generate points every time you would move along the track and can't. The Conquistador track, on the other hand, is nice for how it resets all the time, so it's a constant kind of majority, and if someone's done really, really well in one round, it doesn't mean they're going to keep doing that, you know, you get reset back to the beginning, and I like that as well. And and it can be good that even if you know that you're not winning, the, the gold that you get from going over certain spaces, still, you know, entices you to do it rather than just giving up because someone else is so far ahead on it. Even if you're not first, well, in, in a game with more than two players, you do get points for second place in a three-player game and third place in a four-player game. But getting that gold, which is a wild card resource and sometimes can be essential for certain shipping contracts, can be a really useful thing as well. The shipping contracts I mentioned a little bit, but they are great for how they, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that's in a lot of games where you just want to fulfill these, you're going to get some points. But then the fact that the row that they're on dictates your decision as well. You want them from a particular row because, okay, I am doing, I, I'm really going for the religion track. Like I tried to do with Marty in the playthrough and it didn't really work. You know, I've got loads of uh, religion spaces on my colony and I'm going to just try and fulfill all of the contracts I can so that at the end of every round, I'm going to generate a ton of it. And at the same time, you can be doing that with the conquistadors. So you don't really need to bother with the action spaces so much because you're getting a load of free ones when you retire from the round. Or money as well, getting flooded with money. You know, not only is it worth points at the end of the game, but as I said, you, you can just keep activating buildings then because they get more and more expensive. You know, the first one is only one, second building you activate is two, third building you activate. 
if you can just activate tons of those because you don't have to worry about money at all, it would be really fantastic because you can only, at most, after you've activated, after you've unlocked all of your blue dice, you're only going to get to activate six dice, basically. The three blue dice you've got and three of the white dice that are available, How many, however many are available in this game. So getting to activate, in, activate individual buildings is great for if the numbers haven't come out, if you've run out of dice to place, or you just, you know, you want to activate a full row, like, like that happened in the playthrough. I want to activate this full row that's got shipping at the beginning, but I haven't quite got the resources that I need yet. So maybe I want to spend a free action and buy a resource, or do I want to activate a building that's in a completely different place so I can grab the resource that I need and then I'll activate the full row. That's a really nice touch as well. That all contributes to not making the dice not matter, but gives you, it puts you in control of the dice. You know, it can, it's it's nice if everything works out for you and, you know, just the row that you want to activate, there's plenty of dice left for that and you're not going to have to pay for that and they activate everything in the perfect order so you're not going to have to worry about activating anything else. But if things don't quite go your way, you are still really in control of what goes on in this. And it's nice sometimes that not rolling the particular things that you need can sometimes drive you in different directions. It can certainly scupper you as well if, as I said at the beginning of the game, you know, the, the particular row is empty and you've been building in other areas. But yeah, I do like how much control you've got over it all. I'm not sure how much I talked about the advanced variant in the video now as well, but uh, it's rather than starting with, everybody starts with a slightly different colony on the A sides. The B sides are all exactly the same, but they haven't got a town hall on them or a starting colonist. Instead, those town halls are on individual tiles that we then pick at the start of the game. We'll lay them out and pick them, but we'll also take one of the, uh, what are they, the scholar tiles? We'll take one of these and put those with each town hall. So not only are you picking what ability your town hall is going to generate when that's activated, but you're also going to start the game with one of those abilities that you unlock later, which means you can have one more than normal as well. Uh, probably just play that way in future as well but the basic way is really nice to just get you started and get you going with the game but i've been going on about this for ages now i've really 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 liked it as i said i was excited to begin with but it has exceeded my expectations and i've been really really enjoying it and i'll repeat again that it's early days and as always just ignore what i've said and the playthrough is there to try and you know help you make your mind up as to whether it's something you'd enjoy so as I said, you can watch the playthrough and decide for yourself, but I think I'm going to stop talking about it now. Santa Maria. Bye.